against the human to human strain that does mutate. Now, this is another, um, this happened last year. This article was entitled, U.S. Under the United Nations Law and Health Emergency. This is from 82807 last year. Jerome R. Corsi from World Daily Net. This this says that the Security and Prosperity Partnership, or it's otherwise known as SSP of the North American Summit in Canada, released a plan that establishes the UN, the United Nations law, along with regulations by the World Trade Organization and World Health Organization, as supreme over U.S. law during a pandemic and sets the stage for militarizing the management of a continental health emergencies. Well, that's pretty heavy duty. In other words, if an avion flu outbreak happens, American law is essentially suspended. Okay? The United Nations, along with the World Trade Organization, World Health Organization, will be supreme over U.S. law during the pandemic. The North American Plan for Avion and Pandemic Influenza was finalized at the SPP Summit in Montebello, Quebec, under the International Partnership on Avion and Pandemic Influenza. Bush agreed the U that the United States would work through the United Nations System Influenza Coordinator to develop, and that's primarily David Nabarro that we mentioned earlier, but he will work, Bush will, he agreed that the U U.S. would work through the United Nations System Influenza Coordinator to develop a continental emergency response plan operating through the authorities under the World Trade Organization, the North American Free Trade Agreement, and the United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization. Sounds like an absolute nightmare to me. Now, can you see how if this happens, people are saying, oh no, well, you know, this one world government, this type of thing, it, it won't happen. Can you see how this would accelerate things? And it would all be done under the guise of, hey, it's an outbreak, it's a pandemic, what are we going to do? There's not, you wouldn't even have to have a terrorist attack involved. This would all be done, and it would all be done under the guise of, for the betterment of humanity. And they come out smelling like a rose. World Daily Net could find no evidence the Bush administration presented the influenza partnership plan to Congress for oversight or approval. Well, he thinks he's above the law, essentially. And he pretty much has proven that he's above the law. The SPP plan gives primacy for avion and pandemic influenza management to plans developed by the WHO, the World Trade Organization, the United Nations, and NAFTA directives. So that pretty much says it all right there. There's the source article. Now you can read the full North American plan for avion and pandemic influenza, security and prosperity partnership of North America at, and I give you the link there you can go to. Okay, so let's talk about Project BioShield, medical martial law, and forced vaccinations. Now, on July 21st, 2004, President Bush signed the $5.6 billion Project BioShield into law. And this is a picture of him actually doing that, selling us up the river. And you'll notice the placard in front of him that says, Protecting America. And this is, you know, common tactic, you know, making something that's actually evil appear good. And the Bible says, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. So, under Project BioShield, the government can impose mandatory vaccinations on Americans while simultaneously declaring martial law based on any emergency, real or imagined. Now, there's the WhiteHouse.gov link. So, we're talking about mandatory vaccinations on America while simultaneously declaring martial law based on any emergency real or imagined. Now, as I've said before, I believe the bird flu is the most plausible and best vehicle to accomplish this very thing. Because if we had an avion flu outbreak, they're going to they're going to impose martial law in order to, you know, quell dissenters and keep the quarantines and these types of things. And by doing so, under Project BioShield, then they can actually come and mandatorily vaccinate people against their will. So this is very important to understand this whole concept here. U.S. Supreme Court Justice Robert Jackson said, It is not the function of our government to keep the citizen from falling into error. 
It is the function of the citizen to keep the government from falling into error. It was well put. And there's the quote from that picture of him. The Military Vaccine Resource Directory, and we give the website there, they say that the term biofascism describes the merging of number one military medical establishment, two, the FDA and public health bureaucracies, and three, the pharmaceutical medical cartels. This is a picture of a little girl being, looks like force vaccinated. What will American citizens do when nurses accompanied by armed police and soldiers come to their door and order them to be vaccinated? Since 9-11, federal and state laws have been changed to now allow for this. We just looked at Project BioShield. The American people do not understand that the bioterrorism legislation passed by Congress since 9-11 makes the U.S. Patriot Act look tame by comparison. Mandatory vaccination under an emergency declaration can be based simply on a potential threat of bioterrorism. Already the Pentagon is demanding that American military anthrax vaccine refusers submit DNA samples that are to be placed in the FBI's national database of criminals. This is the de facto criminalization of vaccine refusal, and because of the emergency authorities enacted in the 2004 Project BioShield Act, all American civilians can now also be subjected to the same erosion of their civil rights as those in the military. Did you know former President Clinton quietly signed Executive Order 13139 on September 30, 1999? This order requires military personnel to receive experimental vaccines not approved by the FDA and denies the soldiers the right to refuse or to even be provided with informed consent of what they're receiving. That sounds fair to me. Now, again, with this presentation, I always want to bring it back to the Word of God. Because, in reality, the Word of God is our only hope. The Lord Jesus Christ, our only hope. Okay, This is not something man is going to overcome by going out and protesting and doing this and doing that. The Bible says, The prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. Okay, So what we're trying to do right now is foresee the evil that's coming, that they're telegraphing to us that's so flagrantly obvious. But 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear. This is the fear of man or of event. Many people that talk about these subjects, all they give is one side of the story. They're only giving, okay, the bad stuff. And the Bible says God hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. If you're a born-again, Bible-believing Christian, saved by the Lord Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection that you believe in. The Bible says, For you are saved by grace through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So it's a gift. You either freely receive or you freely reject. Okay? But God has not given us the spirit of fear. But there's so much of this spirit of fear around because of these types of events. But what we want to do is keep our eyes fixed on Jesus Christ. Now Psalm 18 verse 2 says, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust. See, that pretty much says it all. My buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. See, he's our rock. That's why I have a picture of that big rock there. He's our fortress, a deliverer. Okay, So it's just very, very important where you're keeping your eyes fixed, particularly when you view information like this. This type of information doesn't upset me because the Bible said it was going to happen. The Bible clearly predicted that evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived, according to 2 Timothy 3.13. Um, the Bible says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in, that in the end times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, having their lies, um, speaking lies and hypocrisy, and having their consciences seared with a hot iron. And that's where we're at right now. So this shouldn't surprise us. It's actually a confirmation of the Bible. And um, in that regard, it's confirming the Bible and the Word of God. 